Today, we're going to do some rounding practice. We're going to learn how a number like 883 changes when it's rounded to the nearest 10. And we're going to get a little help from some friends along the way. So get ready for some Pokemon rounding practice. Let's look at this number. Its number name is 78,789. If we wanted to round this number to the nearest hundreds place, where would we start? Let's find which number is in the hundreds place. Let's mark that number. Now that we have correctly identified the number in the hundreds place, let's start rounding. The number to the right of our seven, the number in the tens place, holds all the power here. It decides if our seven will stay a seven or if it will evolve into an 8. If the number is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, then our number in the hundreds place stays the same. Anything higher and our 7 evolves. In this case, the number next door to our 7 is an 8, which means that our 7 gets to grow into an 8 itself. Now that our number has evolved, you'll notice that all the numbers to the right of it have been replaced with zeros. This is the final trick to rounding. Once you've decided if your number stays the same or goes up, every place value to the right of it changes into a zero. So remember, identify which number is in the place value you're rounding, look to its neighbor on the right, decide if it tells our number to stay the same or go up, and then change all the digits to the right of our number to zero even the neighbor that told it to change or not. Got it? Let's try another. Our next number is 2,624, and we're going to round it to the nearest 10. Let's start by identifying which number is in the tens place. Teachers, pause the video and call on someone to give the answer. If you said the two that's between the six and the four, then you're right. Remember that we read place value from right to left, starting with ones, then tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, and beyond. In this video, we'll only be going up to the hundred thousands place value. Now that we've marked our number in the tens place, we'll need to look to its neighbor on the right. It's a four. Will the four tell our number to stay the same, or will it give it the energy to grow? Teachers, pause the video again and find out what your class thinks. Hopefully you remember that the numbers 0 through 4 tell us to leave our place value the same, so our little Bulbasaur doesn't get to evolve today. Sorry, buddy. Even though our 2 in the tens column stays the same, the number to the right of it, in the ones, still gets changed into a 0. This is because when we're rounding to the nearest 10, the 24 is closer to 20 than it is to 30. We'll leave everything to the left of the tens place exactly as it is. So we're done. Let's see what's next. Here we have 393, and we're going to round it to the nearest 100. How about you try this one on your own? Teachers, pause the video and let your students jot down their guesses. Okay, let's see if you were right. Pick a beat. Rounding 393 to the nearest 100 should get you the answer 400. We can see that 393 is much closer to 400 than it is to 300. And we can also see that the 9 tells the 3 to go up to 4. Oh, here's a tricky one. Sometimes you may be asked to round to a place value that isn't even there. For example, take a look at this, 5,651. What would you do if you were asked to round this number to the nearest 10,000? Pause this video while you discuss. Okay, here's how you handle rounding this number to the nearest 10,000. First, find that place value, which is to the left of our 5 in the thousands place. Since there's nothing there, I'm going to mark it with a zero. Next, we're going to follow our steps for rounding, looking to the right of our new zero, 
and asking it if we stay or go up to a 1. What do you think will happen? Diglett. You are correct. The 5 tells the 0 to go up to a 1. Finally, we change all of the numbers to the right of our new 1 to zeros themselves, which means when rounding 5,000, 651 to the nearest 10,000, it would be exactly 10,000. This is because it is barely closer to 10,000 than it is to zero. If our original number would have been 4,999 or anything less, we would have rounded it all the way down to just one lonely zero. Okay, what's next? Here we go. Teachers, pause the video and have a student tell you the number name for the number on the screen. Now that you know the number name, let's round it to the nearest 100,000. I'll let you try this one on your own. Fast finishers can also write the number in expanded form. Pause the video while students work. Okay, let's see if you got it right. You should have ended up with 900,000. Did you get it correct? Let's do another. Again, let's pause to hear the number name. We're going to round this number to the nearest thousand, and it's going to show us one last trick to rounding. First, let's find the thousands place. Next, look to the right and notice that our neighbor is a five. Does the five tell us to go up or stay a nine? If you said go up, then you're right. But what number is one higher than nine? 10 is obviously the answer, so let's make it happen. Don't forget to change those numbers to the right of our 10 to zero. After evolving our number, you should get an answer of 10,000. Now it's your turn. Try these next problems on your own. Teachers, pause the video at each new number and give your students a chance to solve the rounding on their papers. Fast finishers can practice writing the number name and expanded form of the number.
This last problem is a bit tricky. We were rounding 697 to the nearest 10. Our tens place has a 9 in it, and we look to the right, we saw a 7, which tells us to go up. Our 9 becomes a 10, and we end up needing to regroup by adding 1 to our hundreds place. This changes our 600 to a 700, and replaces our digits in the tens and ones columns with zeros. This was definitely a tricky problem to end on. Did you get it?